What is up everybody? This is Dragon Durant of the Yasuhito 0088. Don't mind that I forgot to update the intro sequence for the Horizon Exploration campaign, but how are we all doing today? Hope you're doing well. I'm excited for episode 16 of our channel's sci-fi tabletop RPG Horizon Exploration. I hope you're all ready for it. The party, well, We'll save the recap for once we get in with the group, but let's jump down and get into it. I am ready to go, and our party is eagerly waiting here as well. All right, well, made a few brief little changes. Hopefully everything came in here very nicely. Make sure the BGM's coming in. It's not. Hello? Huh. Hold up. I'm not hearing anything. Make sure... That is bizarre. My browser is not appearing in my audio channel. Alright. Hold up. We're gonna have to go back here. Let me see. I'll check with the party members here shortly. Maybe they are hearing it, but... Weird. Here, let me, let me, let's, let's bring the party in here real quick. Well, party members, what's up? Oh, yes. Hello. Hey. hey. Your nah. I could totally hear you guys, <laughs> but uh, quick question. In the game, are you guys getting the music? Yes. It's you are. I don't actually know. Bizarre. So my side... My browser is not getting picked up by my operating system, and... Before you do that, try adjusting the, like, audio bar on the actual BGM. Cause I that... did. I did, I didn't... Oh, you did it? Okay. Yeah. I didn't have it at first, and doing that fixed it for me, so I just thought... Alright, I'm gonna have to maybe try reopening the game, so give me a moment, guys. Sorry for the delay. And... If it doesn't go through, I'll just pull in BGM separately, but... We'll try reopening the game. Maybe something had changed as I was preparing earlier. All right. There we go. Now the audio is kicking in. All right, let's get back into it. Okay, that's pulled up. That is coming through and... Much better. There's the music. Awesome. All right, well, <laughs> pardon the delay, everyone, but we are back and we're going to jump into it. So, as we do... Let's introduce our party members from the top. Sam Stonewill, played by Peter. Hey everyone, it's Peter, play Sam, Sam Stonewill, the group's uh, technician. Nice. Maxine Beck, played by Sean, aka Azabiel. How's it going? I'm playing Maxine Beck, and I am remembering everything that happened at the end of last session, so you better be ready. Oh, shoot. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> I'm glad I did not do too much at the end of last session. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a recap here soon, but uh, we also have Caden Lumen, played by Calvin. Yo, yep, yep, sorry, I had to just cut to my mic button. Uh, hey, I don't I know what to say, man. I'm terrible at these. Uh, Calvin, I play Caden, the less and less mysterious character <laughs> the more and more yeah, confused I character i think that counts yeah 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 yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> less mysterious more confused let's go <laughs> all right we got dario cortez played by sergio hey everyone sergio here and dario cortez your resident ranger of the group nice and last up koji akiyama played by Corey. Hello, hello. I also never know what to say during these, uh, but yeah, I play the Angry Barbarian Men. With very deep pockets, as we're slowly learning. Yes, yes. All right, well, talking a little bit about episode 
15 from our episode last week the party having finally reached a city after a good week or so in game of travel i believe i said it was about six days because the group had taken turns uh, and drove through the night with very few stops along the way but they made their way to the city of Fontaine. This is a city that exists north of where the group had previously encountered the Banuk Caravan, which was a kind of a roaming, traveling nomadic settlement of survivors making their way south as they tried their best to avoid and stay ahead of the catastrophe storms that riddle the planet of Aurora Green. But upon reaching Fontaine, they find that the city itself is quite large. There is, in the distance, well, viewed from a distance, Fontaine can be seen with surrounding large mineral formations, almost emerald-like structures made of some material that, with a few encounters, the people don't really seem to understand it or really question it anymore it has been there for some time and through an encounter on the road where the group had found a small little small little group that was camped out staying out by a pillar of sorts a very a much smaller sized object but various people have indicated that the storms don't seem to affect the area around Fontaine and Fontaine itself uh, one of the citizens that I believe it was Caden had spoken to on the along the road John yes <laughs> exactly John Grimes a man that uh, helped the party refuel as their vehicle uh, ran out just before they had made it into Fontaine proper but it seems as though the citizens of Fontaine are less familiar with the occurrences of these catastrophes that riddled Aurora Green and that the party had previously encountered uh, when they were traveling with Banuk and the others. Now, once reaching Fontaine, the party decided to make their way towards the central library of Fontaine. And the central library, uh, with some quick and smart thinking by, I believe it was Sam, looking into his Omni device and looking up a little bit of information as they were rolling into the city uh, about Fontaine, had learned that Fontaine itself seems to be managed, governed by a council of sorts. A few names were mentioned as part of his quick little information lookup but a few mentions that were highlighted was were the Fontaine Central Library which the party had also found out that Jack Finnegan uh, the person of interest that they, that they had all met seems to be in charge of and is one of the uh, ruling members of the city they also saw though have not encountered yet a company called Emerald Road that seems to handle much of the labor and minerals and materials within the city. And a third known as the Narrow Trade Company, which was commented that handles a bit more luxury goods, various forms of information. And well, there's a few others out there, but those were the big three that seem to be making the city of Fontaine prosper. And having made it to the Fontaine Central Library, it was a very relaxing, very... What's the word I'm looking for? It was a very cozy environment. There were people out, sitting around, having meals, enjoying the summer day. Uh, different street performers were riddled about. And Sam uh, decided to go grab a bite and uh, not just a small bite you actually ordered quite a lot <laughs> and i believe 
well, not I believe, but Koji also decided to join them after the party had finally, after 15 episodes, figured out that their Omni devices can act as a communication device. And let me actually double check here if I had made a note about it. I don't think I had, but only three party members had connected their devices to one another. And for those individuals, it was Maxine and Koji are now connected with Caden on their device. A bad choice there, but the, sure. It is what it is. All right. So Maxine, Caden, and Dario continued forward towards the library as Sam and Koji went to what seemed to be a restaurant that, that Sam was heading towards, which was called Rodia Bar. And Koji and Sam are enjoying a meal, which we'll kind of fast forward to once we get into the campaign itself. But Maxine, Caden, and Dario had met a Mr. Ja uh, Mr. Finnegan in the library, initially disguised as a worker at the desk of a one of the library floors as Caden approached a female who was working at a desk and had tried to suggest her to provide some information uh, unbeknownst to the party in-game. His spell was counterspelled and Jack Finnegan had approached and addressed the group and introduced himself after a bit of finessing, verbal finessing by Maxine. Taken to the back room, Mr. Finnegan and the others had a brief conversation about their intentions and what they're doing here and what they're looking to get out of Mr. Finnegan having come to the library. But a short while later, Mr. Finnegan suggested that this was not the right place to have such conversations and instead took the three to a different floor in the central library, one that was void of any sort of windows and was definitely positioned lower in the tower based on the way the elevator moved at least and are currently uh, in a small kind of office meeting room in this location as there are whiteboards there's some monitors and screens there's a little office desk up off in the corner and kind of a meeting table sprawled out uh, in the room itself but Maxine, Koji, or sorry, Maxine, Caden, and Dario will continue with you all in your conversations with Mr. Finnegan, where Sam and Koji, who are going to be enjoying their meal at this time, uh, will come back to them and see how they regroup with, the, with everyone else. But with that, let's kick it off episode 16 of Horizon Exploration. Let's go. So... Again, the three of you following Mr. Finnegan to the elevators and going to a floor that could only be reached using a key card and a kind of a button combination in the elevator. Jack leads you all to this meeting room. And as the lights turn on, you see the room lights up, but looks very basic at the moment. Nothing electronic nothing overly or no, nothing electronic nothing is turned on uh, when it comes to what's on the screens the whiteboard seems to have some kind of erased marks on it but is otherwise nothing has been left behind but jack turns to you all so now that we are in a place that i feel a bit more comfortable To speed it up, I'm going to ask the group, would you all have introduced yourselves at this point? I already had. Some of you had. I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. All right. So yeah, when you're down here, Mr. Finnegan will go through kind of introductions, introducing himself, and you guys will do the same, but we'll skip over your part. But Mr. Finnegan... turns to everyone and 
seems to be waiting to see if there's any questions that uh, may arise. Any, He's currently observing the three of you and walking over to his desk as he goes to turn it on. Uh, oh, yeah, go, Wes. Oh, I was just going to say, there, there is a clear um, tension, I would say, with Maxine. I think there would be. Yeah, that seems very <laughs> appropriate, Maxine. Uh, Looking at Maxine, um, would I know? Uh, and this is more to to to, um, to Maxine here. Would we notice like some, I guess, facial expressions, like very visually looking annoyed or give angry? give us a <laughs> give us an insight roll, Caden, Dadio, if you guys are interested in Maxine at all. Uh, I would say I'm also very wary as well. Uh, Fifteen. A few people I've met with powers have not been friendly. Well, not that I've met, that I've heard of. Maxine, what's your deception uh, modifier? Uh, that's probably a minus one. Okay, that's right. Yeah, it's a minus one. All right. So, yeah. Maxine typically having a pretty hard expression. Dadio, as you look over, you're going to notice that Maxine's mood is very clearly written on her face as Maxine, why don't you explain to the group what it is that would be seen on her, her guys right now? Uh, I think what you're going to see is, <clears throat> you know, with, with Maxine, there's the usual uh, scowl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of the, the neutral states. Um, which, you know, definitely isn't gone. Uh, I would say just enhanced. Uh, eyes kind of darting around this place. Uh, the prosthetic hand is kind of tensing, flexing, like uh, almost like a nervous tick. Um, and just... At, at, at this point, probably looks like it's hard to stand still. Like, just this this need to move in some way, uh, rather than keeping that poise and, and uh, discretion. Okay. And Jack right now is looking straight, like, uh, at... Maxine, like they're like face to face, or does um, Jack have his head um, turned the other way? No, so you've all kind of entered this room, and it's up to you if you take a seat at, at the kind of meeting table, or if you're standing more, you know, in front of the door, in front of his office table that is in the opposite corner. But Jack has moved over to his desk. He seems to be turning some things on, and though his eyes mostly linger back and forth between the group, he does periodically bring his attention to his systems on his desk. But after a brief moment of, of silence, as you all are, again, there's a tense air in this room. Jack takes a seat and leans back with a huff of, I guess, calming nerves. But he looks up to you all. Before we discuss more of what it is that you wish to gain from coming to see me, how is how has Luca been? How sorry, what was that? I missed that last bit. How was what? How has Luca been? Luca? Oh, Luca's good. He's alive. Thanks to us. His expression softens uh, with the mention of Luca doing well. That's good. He, uh, it's been many years since I've seen Luca. He had actually helped out and worked in the library for some time. Seen the kid grow. Definitely has a good head on his shoulders and, well, you said that you traveled with him for a little bit, helped them out. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about that? 
we ran into him by the was it the Deadlands, the Saltlands, whatever that place was called. Yeah, it's uh, pretty far, pretty far south down from here. And uh, we camped with him for a few days. Uh, met his sister, Samantha, and uh, we had an encounter with the. Have you even heard of them here? Like, no one seems to know what I'm talking about. Like a catastrophe. I'm familiar with the catastrophes. It is difficult to be on Aurora Green and not know of their existence. They've been raging the planet for a good yes. while now. I was blown away that John didn't know about these things. Well, he knew about them, but he was like, oh, they don't really happen. It's, Who? It's on my mind. John, some guy I met in town. Ah. Well, we have been fortunate here in Fontaine. The don't really know how to explain it, but the I'm sure if you are new to the city, you've seen the jutting structures, the green stones that erect around Fontaine itself. I don't really quite understand why or how, but they seem to be originating around Fontaine. And for some odd reason, the storms don't seem to breach them. It's almost as if uh, the planet itself has made a, a makeshift barrier for the city. It's been a blessing for us, but at the same time, I do worry that the citizens of Fontaine have begun to grow a bit more lax. I know the situation planet side and across the planet is not nearly as ideal as well what we see here as he kind of gestures around him in no specific direction yeah, well that's part of what we ran into with uh, Luca it was a oddly impromptu storm that uh, turned the salted lands into an ocean again the salted lands uh, I've lands not like that done some research it's not the salted lands are scattered around it seems that wherever there is a a body of water where the storms hit there's a fair chance that the lands will change we've noticed that above surfaces of water particularly far to the east and west there are some patches that have been made uh, i hear from my colleagues in stillwater who they are a bit more coastal than Fontaine is, but they have shared some information that the area to the north, especially uh, uh, around Stillwater, is pretty heavily populated with these salted lands, enough so that you're able to traverse from the bottom half of the continent to the, to the next. It's quite something. It doesn't seem to be a bad thing, though, then, right? I mean, bringing back water must be bringing life, which, I mean, we call them a catastrophe, but it seems like, you know, bringing back water would be a good thing for these areas. Uh, it, it's all good until the city ends up six feet underwater. It, the, the oceans themselves are, are less of a concern. Most of our water we manage to filter from the mountains. To the north the oceans of aurora green as he looks to you dario his eyes lingering on you for a split second longer than the others as he speaks the oceans of aurora green are very heavy in their salt content i imagine that has something to do with why the name salted land stuck the soil i guess after a catastrophe is very high in the salt content and as such we find that much of our tools if they're not made to withstand corrosion they, they become weak and brittle if we excavate those lands for too long we haven't quite found a good solution on, on how to address them but once again the area around fontaine is relatively unchanged with the exception of these formations and with that he actually will go ahead and uh, turn on one of the monitors and a projector drops down 
from the top of the meeting room and on one of the screens a image of the fontaine exterior is shared i'm gonna go ahead and pull that one back up again this one here specifically focusing on again on the kind of mineral structures that are formed in the distance uh oh sorry go oh uh just quickly uh looking at maxine just um a little bit under my breath uh, those kind of look familiar don't they trying to engage with uh her to see if she's going to be welcome like welcome to conversation or you know if she's kind of being more reserved right now kind of based off of her i guess her manner Jack, yes. why is this place better than where we were? Where you were? Where we were. You brought us here, why? Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Ah, well, you may not be able to tell, but this is beneath the central library. Fontaine is a sprawling city. We've grown much in the last few decades. But about 20 odd years ago, I believe it's been, things started to change. We started to see tension in the Akiyama family and their leadership of this planet. I believe Dynasty has something to do with that. They have been expanding their influence across the stars and well it seems that they had set their eyes on aurora green some time ago i don't know if that had anything to do with the war that raged on but as i started to see more and more people coming to aurora green well i maybe about a few years after Dynasty started to become a, a more common name on the planet is when the fighting really began to escalate. It started small at first, but the North was definitely hit the hardest. Well, I suppose I guess this is a, a beside your question, but I bring bring I brought us down here because ever since then, Fontaine has also gone through some changes of its, of its own. If you don't, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the city, there's a, a, a newer group that became very reputable in the city. And I'm a bit skeptical of their intentions. May we, I ask who they are? Is the Narrow Trade Company? It is the Narrow Trade Company. Are you familiar with them? Our, com our communications to this place blocked. External communication. Meaning? If someone wanted to send me a message or look in on what I was doing while I'm in here, are they going to be able to? <laughs> no, that is very perceptive of you. Yes, the... Fontaine, though we are doing quite well for ourselves, there have been cases in the past of others spying on one another. Well, because of Jack. that, I've decided to create this underground bunker under the <sighs> central library, and it should be far enough and secured from any prying eyes, whether they be within Fontaine or otherwise. You, your name, meeting you came recommended by someone I feel like I could trust with my life. Someone I fought alongside, even if only briefly. Luca? Luca. So, Jack. I am trusting you. I am 
putting my faith in your good character. When I came into the city, I requisitioned Dynasty through ASEC to get me expedited access and access to information. They routed me to the Narrow Trade Company. Did they know? They did. He... His eyes wander for a bit. In deep thought, his brow furrowing, his forehead wrinkling. So perhaps my assumptions were correct about them. I don't have any evidence, but I had suspicions that Dynasty and the Narrow Trade Company were working more closely together than they had led the population to believe. There's more that uh, Dynasty has going on here. Our... They're interested in the Akiyamas. You're very... What's the word? You're very... well-versed, it seems, in... Dynasty's involvement. Are you... contracted by them, perhaps? Jack, I'm gonna need you to tell me something. I... I told you I was going to... get your best guess. The men in the black armor. Tell me who you think they are. His expression hardens. Do you work for Dynasty? Tell me who you think they are, Jack. Give me your choice of persuasion, deception, intimidation. I didn't bring my it's going to be a 17 on Intimidation. On Intimidation. The people in the black armor. I don't know who they are, but I have my suspicions, as I said last earlier. I think they were hired. And I'm not sure if Dynasty is responsible for it, but I believe Dynasty plays a bigger role in the changes of Aurora Green in the past 20 years. I also have my suspicions that the people in the black armor came from a particular corporation that I've had my eye on. They're a bit more, they're a bit closer to the, the primary sectors of the United Federation, but have you ever heard of a corporation called Dawn of Sakara? Daddy's eyes light up a little bit at the mention of that. That don't mean anything to me. Well, Dawn from what I've collected, seems to be heavily involved in cloning technology. They seem to be, they seem to be involved across the United Federation. And I would have never have known about them, not until I was selected to be one of the leaders of Fontaine. I suppose with my position comes a variety of knowledge that I'm now privy to. And Dawn is an organization that has increasingly began to garner interest, uh, my interest. I don't know, again, if the Black Armor are Dynasty's people, but I strongly believe that Dynasty and Dawn are somehow connected, if not working with one another. Dynasty is a large organization. They 
have expanded greatly from what I understand in the past 50 years alone. They were always, from what I can tell, looking at the records of Earth. That dynasty has history. The dynasty has originated from Earth and, well, they seem to know more than they are involved in as, as much as their guise is to be a hero of mankind. I won't discredit that they've been very helpful that through Abscorp, there have been many people who we've been able to get off planet side when the catastrophes hit through Abscorp. They have also been able to help many people who have been injured during the war. And through some of the services of ASEC as the catastrophes hit and Edrison fell, we were able to provide ourselves with a, an arm of protection where we had needed it, when we had needed it. And yet now, with you telling me that Dynasty had directed you through the Narrow Trade Company, worries me. It makes me wonder what else Dynasty perhaps has their fingers in. And because of my suspicions, I have become increase increasingly cautious and skeptical, even within my own city. They want Akiyama, too. They have some interest in Akiyama. What's your stance on Akiyama? Are they any better? I have no preference on Akiyama. My, my hands are full as it is, trying to do what I can for the city of Fontaine, and by that extension, what I can perhaps do to get Aurora Green back on its feet. This is still my home, and I wish to see it back to the days where... Well... I wish to see Fontaine prosper once again. Well, not Fontaine, Aurora Green prosper once again. It's a, a shame that the Akiyama family had decided to let go of Aurora Green, but their business is that of their own. I, again, have too much on my plate thinking about this planet alone. It's what if they want it back? The Akiyama family. Uh, what would they be doing here? What do you mean? If they had sent someone here, <clears throat> what would that person be doing here? Why would I be sent to keep supervision on this person? I, 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 I don't understand what you mean. Can you not... <sighs> There's an Akiyama here. Why would he be here? Uh, what is an Akiyama... Be, are one of you part of the Akiyama family? No. Uh, I'm, I'm I was sent to supervise someone from the Akiyama family. And you're telling That's me... That's the whole reason they sent me here. And you're telling me that a member of the Akiyama family is on Aurora Green currently. I'm trusting you. For those of you keeping a close eye on Jack, give me a insight roll. Uh, fuck. Dario with the 21. Ah, oh, it's a 12. All right. Dario and Maxine. Maxine, clearly in a bit of a frustrated rage of hers, are uh, interrogating jack dadio you in particular are going to notice that jack seems his expression is very confused he is kind of looking between you all as if unsure what the significance of the conversation is uh, his eyes again kind of furrowed and he takes uh, a bit of time to himself to kind of process what's being said but shaking his head slightly. 
my my interests are to Fontaine and Aurora Green. But if, if there is a member of the Akiyama family planet side, that is of little. I don't quite see the significance. Uh, though the planet may not be under the rule, uh, at least officially by the Akiyama family anymore, the we are still within the Akiyama's sector. It, it wouldn't surprise me if one of them had decided to pay a visit or go sightseeing or you say that you were brought here to keep an eye on this individual though I, I, I you must forgive me I'm not quite sure I understand the the significance of, of asking me what I think about it uh, I don't he puts a hand there. Uh, let me perhaps put it this way i i can't speak for the entirety of aurora green obviously but uh, here at fontaine at least for myself i don't have a any form of relationship with the akiyama family itself so uh i'm, I'm sorry maxine but i don't know if i'm going to be much help when it comes to your dealings with the akiyama family No, like I said, they sent me here. I wear their tech. I wear their armor. I use their weapons. Everything, almost everything I have, I have because of Dino, because of Anubis security. They can do anything, for all I know, with my gear. They could look through my cameras, they could shut down my equipment, maybe. But I am on their payroll. I and see. I know, I think, they can't be trusted. So if there's anything that I can do with their equipment that can shed some light on any of this, I'm here for Aurora Green. I'm here for Atlan Grove. I'm not here for Anubis Security or Dynasty or any of them. Well, I'm going to need you to give me a persuasion or perce uh, deception, depending on intent. If you want to roll it privately, you're welcome to. Uh, yeah, just for fun, I'll do a I'll do a private GM roll. Yeah, let's do that. Because that's fun. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Incredible. Interesting. It's either good or bad, guys. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Fascinating. Unbelievable. Wow. Um, I rolled the same thing I... you did. <laughs> that's uh. Like... Miracle. Isn't that the second time that happened with this pair of characters? It might have been. Yeah, this is incredible. I'm amazing. <laughs> so, um, Defender wins. I think he passes the check because uh, Az is the one defending the other guys making the inside check, right? It is irrelevant either way uh, because they are both net failures. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Jack is looking at you with a bit of skepticism in his eyes, but... Well, if I did my job right, and you were to try to tap into the Dynasty Network, you should find that they are not going to be able to reach you down here. I made extra care. I took extra precautions to ensure that this area 
was completely blocked off from any outside interference, and what lies down here is all its own closed circuit. There is a way to reach me down here through a particular floor above, but there's only a handful of individuals that uh, would know how to reach me, and really, it's only used to reach me. So, with that said, he looks over to Dario and Caden. Is it safe to assume, then, that these two are part of your platoon? Mm, they're independents. We're friends. We're kin. I... Very kin. See, and you are all here to accompany Maxine on her task. We're here for our own reasons. Our goals align. Both me, you, and Maxine want Aurora Green to return to how it was, not how it is. I... Abscorp wants a bunch of independents to find them. Holy Grail. Cock and an eyebrow. Some... Holy Grail. What? They want a core. Core. They. They have... want all the power in the universe. Probably. I don't. Why would? I knew. Dynasty was looking for something. Uh, we've heard countless remarks of pods and shuttles being dropped from Bora Station. As much as we've seen evacuations, there seems to be now an influx of hot drops of, across Aurora Green. Uh, my colleagues over in Stillwater have also mentioned that there are drops happening around their city as well. But why would they send people for cores? Uh, it, Dynasty should have plenty of power cores. They're not... Uh, I, I don't know why a dynasty does shit. But is, is there something more to it? Is it? Is that not what we're looking for here? Well, this isn't just a regular power core. This is like a... I forget the terminology for it. Um, it's a special type of core. It's like a super processor. I don't know this shit. Maxine, you should know this shit. Is, are, you, are they looking for like a... A fusion reactor core? I mean, th those... No, no, like a ancient, super powerful core, really good processing, used for uh, space travel and calculating routes. Uh, what else the hell do they use them for? Uh, give, give me a... Um, I'm going to have you to give me a... Oh, God, what would it even be? I, I'm History, trying to explain something that doesn't understand. Like, he's just trying to name shit off. Like, I know, I, I kind of want to have you give me a, a rule that I could insight against to see if he can piece together what you're referring to, but I'm trying to think, what would your role be? I'm going to have you, like, hmm. I feel like it's going to have to be something intelligence-based. Yeah, give me a give me an Arcana Science, but no proficiency, because you're Arcana. So, roll Arcana, and then give me a, we'll just minus two the result. Could I, w with him, like, questioning this, could I also make uh so i got a 16. okay so 16 for Caden, as you're trying to explain and maxine you want to chime in as well yeah like i i'm gonna start racking my brain see if i can figure out if there's something that i'm missing in relation to uh what we're what they sent us here for gotcha uh which should be a 20. 20. 20. very cool all right as Caden's trying to name off the various terms and kind of the description of what he's, what you guys were sent here to look for, Maxine, you recall from the contract and the initial kind of spiel uh, of Abscorp sending people out that it's not just any core that they sent you here to search for. The Abscorp seems to have reason to believe that on Aurora Green, there are signs or clues of the existence of a Horizon Core. That was the fucking name. Okay. okay. If only there was a campaign name that lent to so, that naming. The, 
the confusion for me out of character is that I didn't realize that there was two types of cores. Well, of course, of course, there is. Core. of course, there is. of course, apples have cores. Dude, shut up. <laughs> Dude, I thought we were here looking for an apple for the whole time. Yeah. No, the point is, it's a word that has more than one meaning, is what I was getting at. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So, yes, Jack is looking at you all a little confused, especially with Caden's barrage of poorly describing what kind of a core it is it's very much a character though so it's yes. like starting to snap my fingers on the artificial hand which has a bit of a different sound than natural you know flesh yeah um it's a clack 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 yeah the horizon core the ai and you don't i don't know you don't make them they they just are that's something thing, like that thing. Uh, horizon core yeah 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 Let's, uh, let's see. He should know what this is. He lives in a freaking library. Uh, Horizon cores are a legend, are they not? The I've heard records of them in old books. Uh, you talking now... about the thing made by uh, the, the, uh, the power source that uh, I believe there was a thesis or something. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Victor Horizon had written something about the evolution of, like, a supercomputer becoming self-sustainable and amassing large amounts of power, but uh, on Aurora Green. Uh, but then he pauses, uh. and his eyes kind of look off in a direction, not towards any of you. What would Dynasty do to acquire such a thing? Uh, drop hundreds of people, thousands onto the planet to look for it. Snaps to you. You perhaps even start a war so that they could acquire a planet where a core exists on. Possibly. I, I don't know, Abscorp. I'm going to find the nearest wall. There's plenty. And I'm going to do everything in my power to push my prosthetic hand through the wall <laughs> with great intensity just channeling as much Koji Akiyama as I can as he says that <laughs> All right, let's uh, give me a strength roll. All right. Uh, that'll be a 13. Maxine, you quickly slam your fist or your palm into the wall, and the wall breaks, and behind it is a concrete slab or just purely a, a solid object, but you create some dents and it breaks apart around your hand as pieces of it fall to the ground. Hey, what, what, what was that? She She's okay? Pissed. Why? That war that you're referencing was took a toll. I listen, I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't know. I don't know if there's any connections there. But you're thinking... What I've been thinking. And then he calms. And if that... has any ground, that means I have sold my life to the people who took everything from Well, as you said, you're not here for them. You're here for yourself. You can make changes to your life still. It's not set in stone. No. But if she is under Dynasty, it may not be written in stone. But it may be written in ink. 
or digital signatures. If I've learned one thing on Aurora Green, things change. I'm gonna like, like move some magic around my hand or some effects around my hand. Hayden, as you go to do that, nothing yeah. happens. Oh shit! That's new. Did... Snapping? Well, I was trying to like use the powers. Yeah, Finnegan looks at you. Snapping is new to you? No, no. Can you use your abilities here? No. Greenstone? Deep underground seems to be stronger down here. And as such, it seems that even the, the powers that I'm familiar with are dampened. Well, that ruined my flair. Things change in Aurora Green. That's one thing I've learned in the last 10 years. This entire world has changed. Nothing's the same. Nothing has been the same on Aurora Green for many years, Caden. That's my point. So are you saying then that if we bring people down here with abilities, is it by depth? Then that their abilities dampen. We're closer to the crystals, is why. That is. That has been my theory as well. There seems to be a stronger presence of whatever these minerals that surround Aurora Green or uh, Fontaine are. And the further down we go under the city of Fontaine, the stronger those effects seem to be. And the only reason why I believe that to be true is as he snaps his fingers what you saw were sparks when you guys were upstairs no longer happened for him either but as you are all conversing and Maxine punches the wall and you all learn a little bit about what could be happening here on Aurora Green we're going to pivot over to Sam and Koji who are wrapping up their meal around this time and I'm going to sit down for <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna fast forward past your meal but unless you guys want to talk one-on-one -on -one about anything backstory talk <laughs> but if not i have something that is going to happen mm, i have nothing to ask koji yeah all right as you guys are enjoying <laughs> your meal and the tab at the end is going to be something around uh 12,000 credits, which is what, 12 silver. And Koji, I need you to give me a perception roll as you. No. Not perception? Uh, just tell me what your passive is now I think about it. Passive is 11, I believe. <laughs> just 11. for rest, I feel like that's the most suiting dinner for them to have. In absolute silence, just eating food. I feel like that fits them both really yeah. well. That they've Eat. been out in the wilderness for five Eating food, hours. drinking hard liquor, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, just uh, in-game, but I did fit, refill my flask, and then um, we finished the other bottles. Yep. You'll, you'll manage to do that, and you'll finish the bottle you guys ordered. And uh, let me just double check. Yeah, because you guys ordered so much food. So Sam, Koji, eventually, uh, Koji, as you join Sam, um, some time passes. You guys will get some wine. You'll get some liquor. There's like a hearty be uh, beef stew for each of you. There's two helpings of a kebab plate between the two of you. Uh, there's two <laughs> sides of garlic bread. And there's a big basket of wings between the two of you. So... Yeah, uh, you guys have a pretty massive meal. And Koji, you, while, you know, I imagine Sam is probably just kind of talking to himself. Koji's just nodding along or whatever. But there are TVs here in Rhoda, Rhodia Bar. And Koji, you swear for a brief second that you heard the name Akiyama pop up on one of the screens as the volume is a bit low. But the question is, would Koji care as you look up and it looks to be like a news broadcast that says breaking news, um, object update, uh, atmosphere of Akiyama. I'll kind of look over it and see, see if I can get like a server's attention or whatever and just kind of, hey, uh, can you turn up the TV a little bit? 
Huh? You say something? The server's pretty dang busy right now. He's running around and uh, didn't seem to catch you. And on the right. screen, there's a, an image that passes by, which is, or not passes by, but is brought up of... Oh no, did I remember to add it? I didn't. All right, I have it though. So give me just a moment here to pop it up. I kind of look over at Sam and I uh, thought I saw something on the TV about Akiyama. There's always something on the TV about Akiyama. I mean, he's like, kind of famous. Well, yeah, but said like breaking news or some shit. No, I mean, you guys are always breaking things too. <laughs> yeah. It was a pretty common thing with us. <laughs> Just kind of breaking shit. He's on a telly. All right, I'm going to pull it up on the stream side so you guys aren't going to see it in the game for the time being. But for those of you who recall... This is uh, beyond, behind a Patreon paywall. <laughs> yeah, that's a fortune. No. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to the only pan. All right. There we go. Does this work? Nope. That's the wrong button. And show's over. Yep. Show's over, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I got to crop it. One second. There we go. And... Okay. Here it is. So, this location here is brought up on the TV. Which, Koji, you will recognize that scene. That is the corporate headquarters of the Akiyama family. The hell? You recognize that place? Yeah, it's, uh, it's where my family is, headquarters. I'll kind of stand up and make his way on over, get closer to the TV if he can. Sure. And, um... Hey, barkeep, can you turn that up? This time the barkeep does catch your attention, and he looks over and, uh, he, yeah, and turns it up. And, yeah, there's a broadcast that is going on right now. We bring you an update of the strange object found flying in the atmosphere uh, of Akiyama. This object was discovered in the last 24 hours. It, many residents had called in, letting us know of the strange object up in the sky. You can see it here as they bring up the picture and zoom in to kind of this thing up in the sky in the distance above the jutting figure of the Akiyama corporate headquarter the object is unknown and persisted for about an hour before seemingly dropping planet side the Yakuyama family have, have yet to make a statement on what this object is air control is uncertain as the object did not uh, the air control had reported that there were no signs of flights that would be entering when where when and where this object was seen we'll be keeping a close eye on the story and we'll come back with an update as soon as we find out more stay tuned does the object look familiar at all it's a bit hard because it is pretty far in the distance on the uh, television screen uh, that you're trying to zoom in but give me a investigation role to get a very close like try to really identify what this is up close that is a 10 it's uh definitely difficult it's not the highest quality uh through the picture of some pedestrian most likely being shown on a tv and there's a bit of static just because this seems to be coming from somewhere within the sector, not local to the planet. But 
Yeah, it looks like some kind of a spaceship looking structure. Uh, definitely you see kind of the silhouette of some kind of a flying object, but it seems to be surrounded in this Akiyama atmosphere glow of that you might see when a ship goes planet side into the Akiyama's atmosphere. Huh. It's kind of fucking weird. For the ship to be above your headquarters? Don't you all have uh, defenses or anything like that where it'd probably just shoot out uh, anonymous ships? I think we do, yeah. So, I would think then this is probably friendly. Well, right? yeah. Why else would they be that close? Yeah, that's uh, it's definitely kind of fucking strange. Uh, hmm. Do you have, uh, I, I mean, I know you're not uh, the firstborn, but do you have a media family out in that headquarters? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure they'd get a hold of me if something was wrong. Maybe. Have you, have you checked your messages? I checked one yesterday or today. That was the, out of character. That was today, correct? That would have been within the same day. Yeah, you guys yeah. arrived We've been in, in Fontaine this today. So long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I checked it earlier today and uh, got a message from my sister about something going wrong, but. Did, did I did, did I happen to see the date on that at all, Dragon? The uh, broadcast was for today, and the comment that they had made was uh, the object was seen in the last 24 hours. Uh, how about the date on the email that my sister sent? Mm. It was sent to you. Gosh, it was. I believe it was when you guys were entering Fontaine when you all like started playing around, checking your devices and all that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the message would have been sent. We'll say it was like 30 hours ago. So previous day, a little bit, uh, a few hours later or before. Did she request a, a read receipt? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just left her unread. I, uh, I should uh, probably respond to that, shouldn't I? Well, you said it's something weird that she said is going on. Uh, what does weird mean? Well, she didn't say. Uh, she definitely normally more like apt with her uh, like emails and Gojo kind of pull it up and show Sam this just kind of cuts off aren't you worried yeah but they can take care of themselves well if they're anything like you uh, I'm sure they can thank you alright and I hop off the stool well, uh, we should be up and uh, maybe meet up with the others. Yeah, yeah. Kojo kind of look over at the bartender. That TV is like live right now, right? Um, it, it might be a little delayed uh, if this is coming from Akiyama proper, but yeah, uh, shouldn't be more than like an hour delay, if anything. All right, all right. Uh, Can I search the universe wide web? on a strange ship above Akiyama headquarters. Sure. Yeah, give me a give me a science roll. Maybe investigation would have been more appropriate. Cool. Either uh it would have been 3 and I, I don't think it matters what I add. Is it plus 0 for both? Uh investigation plus 2. Plus 2. So okay. Five. It's a 5. All right, we'll go with investigation actually. So yeah, you, you pull up your Omni device and you kind of search it. Um, all you find are just a couple of breaking news notices which talk about uh, the object. There's that same picture that you saw on the TV, but it seems pretty dang new and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of activity other than the news source. It, um, look at Koji. What? what if it is? doesn't look like there's any new info. I'm sure it'd be on, uh, on here if there was. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's uh, let's get going then. All right, you guys get, you pay, you head out, and as, um, Koji, yeah, you remember which way we're supposed to go? I was just about to ask you that. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, Do you know where they even went? Like, uh... what they were talking about a library. 
Oh, there's gotta be dozens of libraries around here, right? Sure. Um, this is like a big city. Cities have like yeah. lots of books, right? No, 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 no. This uh, this place has a a section of the town called the library. Oh, like a why? Why would you dedicate an entire section of a city to a library? What kind of sense does that make? <sighs> Beats me. So, I mean, you can keep everything on data pads. Why have a, why waste so much land? Koji's gonna kind of no, unknowingly, knowingly nod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These two clans. <laughs> I love how it's like, yeah, okay, they're lost the rest of the game. Roll new characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this never make it back. All right, well, Sam and Koji, you guys are gonna. We will walk forward and turn left. I don't know. Uh, sure. Way. Just, just wander. You guys are gonna, yeah. yeah, exactly. You're gonna wander, try to see where you're gonna go, uh, or try to trying to find where the others went. But I think with that, I just realized we're about an hour in. So let's take a quick little five minute break here. Let everyone stretch and get their fuels sorted out, and we'll be back in about five minutes, everyone. So stay tuned and see you all in a bit.
All right, we are back, everyone. Welcome, welcome back to Horizon Exploration, our channel's science fiction tabletop RPG. We're going to be continuing back as we first started off with Maxine, Dario, and Caden continuing their conversation with Jack Finnegan. And what we've learned is his underground kind of secured office uh, underneath the Fontaine Central Library itself. Uh, we also discovered that Dynasty, Dynasty Corporation, may be involved in much more than we had known at a surface glance. Though nothing is confirmed yet, and though much of it is a bit of speculation between Maxine and Mr. Finnegan, we'll see what holds true and what is purely speculation. But Jack seems to believe that there are several corporations that are currently or have has been influencing the change of aurora green the catastrophes are still a bit of a unknown and the existence of a horizon core on the planet is a big question mark and a bit of a surprise to mr finnegan it seems horizon cores are not overly common but Jack, being the head librarian, has read about them and seems to be one of the first people that the party has met that actually knows even what they are. And we also continued back at the Rhoda Bar, where Sam and Koji were enjoying a meal and had caught a glimpse of some kind of a newscast that had a breaking story about an object that was seen above in the atmospheres of the Akiyama homeworld, the Akiyama planet where Koji is from. And well, not much has been revealed. It was, seems again to be one of those uh, UFO sighting type breaking stories, but yeah, very uh, curious what that may be. And we're continuing where Sam and Koji are now unsure where they are going to regroup with the others as they leave the Rota Bar. And the other three are still currently underground with Mr. Finnegan. But before we jump to Mr. Finnegan, Sam and Koji, we'll jump back because we left off with you guys. You're going to be wandering about, looking for where to go. Um, anything in particular you'd like to do in the meantime? Um, I want to see if there's any other people walking. Um, should I be walking? There's a car coming by. I will try to flag it down. There are, there's a busy road. There's pedestrians everywhere. So you'll be able to find. Um, yes. Any, any pedestrians walking like his or herself, just walking down the street. Yeah, there's, um, it's a very populated city. Okay. What's the uh, chance you find John again? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would get uh, the nearest one to us. Um, excuse me. Uh, can you help us? Would you have approached a male, female? Older, younger? Uh, uh, just any person who's alone, uh, I don't know, fucking mid-age walking. Uh, let's go and say man. Okay. Because men are great with directions. <laughs> There's a dude kind of chilling over on a, a, a bench nearby, kind of looking out to the park. But he's there by himself, seems approachable, and you walk up to him. Okay. Uh, um, excuse me, sir. We're new to town. Uh, yeah. And uh, we split up from my friends a little bit ago. They said they were headed to the library. Could you uh, point us in that direction? Um, y yeah, sure, buddy. Uh, which one? I'd look at Koji. Uh, just the library, you know? Like the, the, the big one. Like the library. The they, li he's going he's gonna, he's gonna to kind of like a side over to Sam. They, they did put emphasis on it, right? Uh, yeah, I, it was uh, a whole spot. The library, yeah. uh, the, the central library? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Oh, it's, you can't miss it. It's the big, big spiring tower right there in the middle as he points kind of to the right and kind of in the center of this big old um, kind of courtyard. It looks very like academic, uh, almost like uh, maybe like a university campus of sorts. But at the center of it is, well... There are kind of skyscrapers and such nearby, but one in particular looks very obvious. It stands out quite a lot. 
and uh, yeah, he points to it. There's a bit of like an observatory that he uh, gestures towards at the top. Yeah, you're, you're going to want to head uh, towards that one. It's not too far. Maybe like a 20 minute walk. Two minutes? Well, it's not bad. Um, all right. Well, I guess we just walk towards that way. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and we will. Also, whoever is making a bunch of pot noises needs to mute their mic. <laughs> you should be able to hear me. Uh, it should be me, but nope, I push we hear all of it. All of it. Dude. Yep. <laughs> every clink, every clang. Yep. All right. Appreciate it, bud. All right. Anything On the else? Way, I just want to say that Koji is going to respond to his sister's email, and okay. um, if there's a like convenience store or something, Koji's going to stop and get as many snacks as he can. <laughs> All right. There will well, be well, some stores. If uh, you're responding to your sister, let's talk this out. What are, what are you going to say? Uh, well, she asked if I was or like where I was, so I'm going to tell her where I am, and then just ask her what the hell's going on. I mean. Are you going to share everything we've been through here? Uh, does she know you're here during this mission? Uh, I don't think so, judging by the way that she asked me where I am. What? Uh, Did you tell I... anybody? Uh, no. I was just kind of... And he kind of tenses up a little bit. Why? I was just sent here. Why did you come here to Aurora Green? Business. I'm uh, supposed to figure out what the fuck Dynasty's doing. Oh. Well, uh, that's uh, it's, I mean, they do a lot. I feel like you didn't have to come all the way here. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. But, yeah. And is your sister uh, privy to kind of the inner workings of the, Koji, uh, the Akiyama family? She should be, yeah. Uh, at least oh. higher up than I am. Oh. Then, uh... Not quite as high as my dad, but, uh... D then, yes. Tell her. Maybe she can help us. Alright. And... He'll throw in the... Very, very awfully typed summary of the adventures that we've been on so far. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Tell her about the flowers. The flowers that you make them, uh, people hallucinate and want to stay in the cave? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll throw that in as well. But also tell her, tell her about the, uh, the, 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 the sublands that turn into water. Okay, okay. All right. And the I've... burned people. Uh, the, the bird people? What? The burned people. Burned people, okay, okay. Thought I, uh, forgot something there for a second. Oh, but don't tell her about Keaton. Uh, you don't want to introduce him yet. I kind of weird. Yeah, he is kind of weird, but he seems kind of tied to this place. Don't like if I'm gonna mention a fucking uh, Scorcho. Hmm. What was that? What was the fire person's name? I Iguana. Uh, you mean from from the camp or the the group? No, no, from the Ed Edris place. Um, what are you? They were part of Embers, right? Yeah, the like leader of that. Um, Ingress, that's the name. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, but yeah, if I got, if I'm gonna tell him about Ingress, then uh, I gotta mention that Caden is a part of that, right? That's what he said. Yeah, he did say that. Uh, he also uh, burned down the, a hospital. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, the misinformation! <laughs> we were two guys who have drank so much alcohol in the last, like, two hours. Also, Koji just pays zero attention to anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Alright, so anything, uh, anything else? true enough to be partially true, but not the whole truth enough to look bad. Yeah. That's the yeah. best kind of lies. That's the best kind of misinformation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Koji, with uh, Sam's help, you're gonna formulate a little letter to back to your sister, uh, telling her about where you are, what you've been up to. Um, anything you want to close it out with? 
I hope everything's okay. I saw the like flying spaceship thing on the news. Don't don't fucking die on me, yeah. And that's what I'll send it as. Cool. Noted. All right, you guys. And much more importantly, at the convenience store, he's getting Slim Jims and Red Bulls. Perfect. Or whatever the equivalent would be. <laughs> and how many? Like, how many do they have? <laughs> all right. There's a um, there's a wall of all sorts of energy drinks, and there is a little like a one of those card stand type of a structures where it just a bunch of snacks are kind of like on this little conveyor looking thing and uh yeah there's plenty of like slim jim like snacks as well so you guys ever see that parks and Rex episode where ron uh is like eating at a diner and he goes like i want you to bring me all the bacon you have and the guy starts to walk back he goes no 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 just walk. i think you heard me say i want you to bring a lot of bacon you have but i want you to bring all the bacon <laughs> that you have yeah that's the vibe <laughs> but yeah koji what do you think yeah uh, you know how they keep them in like the little uh, at, at convenience stores and shit mm -hmm. you know how they keep them in the little like cardboard containers mm -hmm. like like slim jims and shit yeah yeah he's just gonna pick up the entire cardboard container cool all right all right so you got a box of slim jim like snacks and like probably uh, grab like five or six whatever just energy drinks okay all right I'll think about the cost and all that later, but you'll grab them and you'll pay for them and uh, no problems. All right. And then from there, head to the library. Cool. Yeah, I think this sounds good. All right. You guys will take a little while to get over there. And as they do, Maxine, Dadio, and Caden, you're back underground, and Jack is there as well. And Maxine, you had punched the wall. I sure did. So, if Abscorp is looking for a Horizon Core. Is that what all the people dropping planet side are searching for? Mike. Oh, you're breaking in and out. Yep. Yeah. My mic uh, decided it wasn't going to work. Um, yeah, that, every one of them, as far as I'm aware. And, uh,. What do you all gain uh, for helping Abscorp with this task? It's a very good question. Why are we here? <laughs> I was coming just back to our green. I didn't really look at what was in the fine print of what we got for it. Well, well, I don't know about everyone else, though, but I mean... Habscorp had promised us at least a reward for whatever we were able to find here. And, I mean, for a lot of folks that we met before we had departed, they seemed up for the challenge, probably would use whatever money or reward that came out of it. Hey, dude, your mic is picking everything up still. Aiden? It should be. It should be push and talk, damn it. Nah, dude. We can hear it all. All right, sorry about that. It's definitely yeah. on like a toggle. <laughs> yeah, so Dario is mentioning that whatever you guys find, they did promise some reward. That is true. But Jack, once again, <sighs> if the rumors of a horizon core true they can easily become a heart of a 
of, a, of an organization, of a, of, a, of a species. That's, from what I've read, how much power they have. My understanding is that... Uh, he kind of looks up and, and thinks to himself for a moment here, trying to recall the what I had read from Victor Horizon's works. I believe the United Federation is in possession of one, and I believe the other races are, are also known to have one, if not more, but there's surprisingly few details of standalone cores how are you expected to find one on aurora green assuming aurora green is even privy to housing one at the moment well honestly i was hoping you could help us with that you have a lot of resources here at the library when you can figure these, something out these people there Aiden. They're a shotgun. Sorry, I guess it is a talk. But only sometimes. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, just mute it. Dynasty. Dynasty knows their target is roughly in this direction. So they send an uncountable number of people in that direction, and maybe one or more of them will hit. But if one of those things is here on Aurora Green then maybe Aurora Green is where it belongs it can do a lot better in the hands of the people here to rebuild and take back what's been lost than in the hands of some corporation that what it's gonna become the next federation Jack. is it the kind of thing that could fix Aurora Green I don't really know how these things work it seems like there's another, something else affecting Aurora Green but well again I information about horizon cores is few and far between it's not long after that well it was years many many years ago the information that victor horizon had put out about the horizon cores really shook up a lot of people from the readings that i have done it really started to change and shape the way Humanity evolved. I believe there was mention that some of that information, some of that wisdom had come from the Elden Alliance, uh, if you're familiar with that species. Victor's research, though many were skeptical at first, once the United Federation was successful in allegedly creating one, it was around the time when mankind became inter interstellar. Obviously, this was centuries ago now, but... I'm still at a loss for words if the rumors of what these devices are, are, are capable of, they would... They would take... They would likely take Aurora Green and make it a powerhouse in the sector. Why would they have such a problem with that then? I mean, the more they prosper, the, the better humanity, or at least all of uh, the universe would be. Who are you referring to? Well, whoever wants to take it from Aurora Green must not want its people to, to thrive with it. But it seems like why would they why would they want to do something like that? Is it is it out of greed? Horizon cores, as much as there are 
sprinkled bits of information across the neural nets and across the United Federation networks. The United Federation has come out and, and claimed ownership of one said core, perhaps even the original that Victor Horizon had once worked on. It is known through our alliance, or at least the, uh, the alliance that mankind has with the other faction races, the Elden, as I mentioned earlier, seems to have their own Horizon Core, or at least what Victor had coined to be Horizon Cores. However, I've never seen one, and I've rarely seen imagery of said cores. I've heard there's plenty of documented stories of research and attempts to create cores and how those have turned unfortunate as it may be, ended in the demise of those involved. You can imagine working with such a large power source, if things were to take one step in the wrong direction, the result could be catastrophic. But I've never heard of an organization or anybody working on a such technology on Aurora Green. It baffles me to believe that where and how. Well, if I, I can only speak for Fontaine, but with my current position in Fontaine and with how long I've been in the city, I am not aware of such a core existing in or around Fontaine. The fighting started in the north, where Atlan Grove was. There's this green circle. And uh, there's been, what, people searching and digging there? More of these? There were. There was. Uh, this was, again, like 20 some odd years ago, I believe, where there was excavation. I don't know what they were looking for, but when Dynasty had made an appearance on Aurora Green, they did focus their efforts from the north, as far as I'm aware. They did seem to be looking for something, but then they went quiet. Uh, Many of the Dynasty folks had gone off-world uh, around that time, and once they had left, uh, that was around the time the war began to escalate, or at least the fighting began to escalate, and a war then broke out. Now that I say it out loud, it almost seems a, like a bit of a coincidence, doesn't it? Almost as if they knew something was going to happen up there. But then the people in the black armor had appeared, and I mean, they bore no signs of being one with Dynasty, but uh, alas, I don't know who commanded them. Having seen various shipments passing through Fontaine, especially once I had r risen to some degree of I suppose the leadership of, of Fontaine I came across records that Dawn had made shipments of personnel and through our starport well after they had made it planet side I'm not quite sure where they had gone since then but the records line up as he goes to his computer and taps away at a few keys and there's like a manifest that gets uh, depicted on the monitors, uh, the screens that the projector is showing. And he shows you a few dates around 18 or so years ago, 16, 18 years ago. Uh, if you, if you, if you look up here, the, there was a, a large influx of transport vessels 
that made it through Fontaine, and it seems there may be other cities that encountered an influx of personnel, and the Sionese seem to be referring back to Dawn of Sakara. Those people, once they had arrived, we didn't have much way of keeping tabs on them. They, it seemed that they had all head to the north, and since then, I had not seen any record of where they are, what they've done. For all I know, they're still on this planet. But those connections that I had told you about, I still believe that Dynasty and Dawn may be in stride with one another. Do you still have your connections with Dawn? I don't have connections with Dawn, per se. Most of my suspicions of Dawn comes through records that I have found, shipments. Much like you might find a manifest for goods that are being brought into a spaceport, personnel deliveries and transportation is also pretty well documented. Once they're planet side and outside of the city, there's not much that I can do to try to backtrack where they may have gone. So there's a bit of a gray zone, a dead zone in my theories. But all of it, all that time that I am unsure about seems to be around the time, the, again, the battles had begun and the war started to escalate until things took a change around six or seven years ago when the catastrophes began to become more frequent across Aurora Green. I believe the I believe there was a big event at Edgerson which had shifted the power balance or something. Edgerson had become under new leadership and the soldiers in black armor had slowly begun to disappear by then. Whether Edgerson is responsible or if it has something to do with Edgerson, I'm unsure, but He... Are you saying Edgerson's connected to the Black Armored Group? No, I'm simply saying that there things had changed after the, the, the war would have kept going, but the catastrophe seemed to have caused the change in how the war was taking place. And I, I think with what I've heard of Edgerson and their fall and I suppose rise from the ashes once again they are a bit of a military powerhouse out to the east now the soldiers the the black armor they started to disappear around that time uh, being in from fontaine i don't have first hand accounts of the situation out there but from the records that i have seen and the news that i had heard when it was happening they seem connected to me. Do you know... Would that have been the, the Onyx Blossom? The who? They were the organization that ran Edgerson before the uh, cleansing. Onyx Blossom. Ah, you mean the, uh, the, that financial group. They were doing quite well. I believe Fontaine had some business with them as well. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I don't know much about the inner workings of Edgerson and this Onyx Blossom group. Mm. Back when the war was happening, I was still very much just a simple librarian out here. They practically ran the city, and they were starting to gain influence over more of the planet. Are they still in charge of the area? Uh, not really. Some of the members still uh, are around, but the uh, core membership are gone. Do, I, do you know what happened to them? 
Uh, most of them were incinerated. Was this perhaps during the cleansing? Yes, it was. He once again kind of gets lost in his own thoughts, um, looking, staring off. Perhaps the storms. Huh. Looking back to, to you, Maxine. Do you think it'd be such a strange idea to think that the planet created the storms to stop the war? Much like... It's protecting Fontaine with these structures. If it no. had some sort of intelligence behind it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that would be that'd be a, a, a ridiculous notion. But unless it had an incredibly powerful AI-based power source of incalculable value buried somewhere within. You are alluding to the existence of this Horizon Core that Abscorp is looking for, and... If are those you... things have some sort of thought, if it had some sort of care about what was going on on the surface maybe it was all right with the status quo maybe it liked aurora green how it was but these people were changing things and so it had to react in i don't know the best way it could figure out how <clears throat> with hazards that uh, people can't people aren't supposed to survive this is all starting to become quite chaotic isn't it it's uh if it weren't for the abilities that I've acquired since the catastrophes began I would have never had considered that this would be even a possibility, but how, how, I, how? Jack is just looking at Maxine and drifting back into his own thoughts, but he seems just completely flabbergasted at the, the concept and his eyes seem to sparkle with a mixture of fascination and confusion and just impossibility but it's around this time that jack that you all in the room hear a chime come from his system as jack looks at it you three have friends that are coming here the technician and a big man it seems that there are two people looking for me at the lobby. Do you... And he types in others. some things and he pulls up a, an image that pops up on the big screen. And in the lobby, there is a tall, burly, looking, slick-backed hair big boy and a short, stubbly, little bearded man standing around uh, the front desk. Yeah, they're, uh, they're with us. Well, perhaps we should go say our hellos as we cut over to Sam and Koji. You guys have made it to a, a big staircase that is labeled Central Library off to the side on like a big plaque. And when you get up to the, the doors, they slide open. You walk in and... Hello, welcome to... Fontaine Central Library. How may we help? How may we help you? Is this coming from a person or person. like a robot? Person. Okay. Um, we're looking for okay. a couple of weird people. 
Um. Well, can you be a bit more district descriptive, please? Uh, one could do shit with his hands. One's like a weird yeah. assassin chick, and the other's uh, he's got like robots. That's all correct. She looks at the two of you, confused. Um, we have people coming in and out all the time. I can't say I've seen people matching the, that description, but are you perhaps... There, uh, could you think of that a little harder? They're kind of hard to miss. They would have been here to talk to your, your head guy. Our head guy? Um, do you have a name perhaps I could ask... Uh, the others on the various floors and they could call to see if the people are you're, you are looking for are around. Uh, yeah, we're looking for Dario, Caden, and Maxine. Alright. Um, give me a moment as she clacks away and sends off a message. And, uh, a short five to ten seconds later, you get a... Uh, she looks back up. Ah, it does seem that there was a group of three that had gone to the 24th floor looking for a... And she pauses and looks at the two of you. Mr. Finnegan? Yeah, uh, that's, that's the one. Are you all acquainted with the three? With those three? Sure. Uh, we've been traveling with them for a few days now. And you also have business with Mr. Finnegan? The same business as the three. I see. Um, let me get a hold of the secretary on the 24th floor. Um, she'll be able to let me know. I believe Jack was last seen there. And she picks up, uh, or not she picks up, but she puts a finger to her ear where there's a little calm device. And uh, Marianne, is is Mr. Finnegan still there? They're kind of mumbling and she's chatting with, with them, but... It's so weird. I always thought that people whispered in libraries. Yeah, so did I. Th this Not is this is the front wrong. lobby. Front lobby, guys. No no books here yet. But Maxine, Dario, and Caden, as Jack stands up and heads to the door, is there anything else you guys would like to do as he gestures for you all to head back towards the elevators? Mr. Uh, Mr. Finnegan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have anybody or know anybody that could tell us more about these cores? Any experts on maybe the the theory on them, or anything that could help us in our and being able to help you? Let's see. The I mean, the cores are. The cores are such a... How do we even explain them? I... I only know of their existence through my academics and research. I... I would be very surprised to, to hear of, of others who are more well acquainted with the existence of cores, let alone having any sort of in-person experience with a horizon core in particular. I mean, if we're talking about nuclear reactors or fusion cores or power cell cores, I mean, there's a, so there's such a more commonly available variety. The, the horizon cores are, they almost amount to, to nothing more than myths as far as the common person is concerned. I, I wish I could help you and, and point you in a direction, but unfortunately it is just not my expertise do uh, do you happen to carry any information maybe in the library any in the catalog that might be able to help us just enough to be able to point us in the right direction again you might find some of the early works by victor horizon talking about the concept of a core but you 
the best I could think of might be records talking about the different factions and the cores that we are, we claim to, to know exist in, in a limited capacity that the United Federation has released to the public. But as far as, well, I mean, is there, is there, what type of information are you, are you perhaps looking for? Um, well, looking at Maxine and uh, Kanan at the same time, trying to see if they'd be able to help supply some additional information, but... Any sort of sign of how to track or find a Ryzen Corp? Do they affect the world around them? Are they found in underground structures? Do they pop out of thin air? We know nothing about them. Anything would be helpful. He shakes his head. No, if, if information and if Horizon Cores were such a common occurrence that we had how-to guides in the library, then <laughs> I'm sure that they would be more common than we know them to be. I'm not looking for a how-to guide. I'm looking for a one time in a story that like six people have ever read. It was mentioned briefly that it was found somewhere. Like it could be archaic as hell and very vague, but we just need something. How, how about this? We have at best theories to go off of right now. And if we follow theory, that could give us some clues. If this core is related to the safekeeping of parts of Aurora Green, you might assume that those same defenses are probably present around the core itself. You're thinking it's related right. to Fontaine, aren't you? It's going to protect itself from cataclysm to ensure that uh, because if it falls then who's left to protect the planet right that's if we follow that theory if uh, if the people in the black armor had a lead on it we know they were looking in the north another place to look Jack one thing I wanted to ask before we I don't know when we're gonna part ways but if you might have any contacts that would have the means or be able to supply the equipment to help in say um reverse engineering some very valuable but also uniform equipment from dynasty i would be interested to know about it he cocked his brow as you were explaining but then his eyes Harden in a understanding, knowing look of affirmation that you're looking to ensure that the gear that Dynasty had provided you is safe for the future. Safe, and uh, I might be looking to a different source for. when I need to upgrade my kit in the future. Well, I don't know if uh, Dario's going to be able to help me with everything, but uh, more hands couldn't hurt. I see. If... Well... Before having met you, I would have referred you to the Nero Trade Company. They by far seem to be advancing the most technologically within Fontaine and 
seem to know a thing or two about specialized gear. Okay. However, after hearing that there may be a connection between Dynasty and Nero, I don't know if I can recommend a resource in Fontaine. You might be able to find a the occasional handyman that the tinkerer I mean, you could try over in the business district and check some of the... I know uh... a guy. Oh, you do now. <laughs> He's a tinker. He might be able to help us out. I don't know, but we could ask. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, follow your lead uh, once we are done here, Caden. Uh, I'm gonna have Maxine give me a persuasion roll. Persuasion. That'll be a seven. Okay. Oh my god, please, game, stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. Alright, but with that, you all depart the underground bunker heading down the hall where again there are some other rooms here as well but making it the elevator jack puts in his key card once again and holds down the first floor button and a few moments later you guys are back in the main lobby where as you step out you see sam and koji uh, apparently getting impatient with the receptionist who is please please uh, I was informed that Mr. Finnegan has been informed. Um, he just is unavailable right now. I, I, I can't seem to find a direct way of reaching him, but I, I was told by his secretary what do you, that... What do you what do you mean? Uh, he's busy? He, you just said that our friend were up there with him? Uh, can you get him on the line? I, I, I don't have clearance. Please, sirs, understand. Well, let me inform you that if you're not down here in the next 10 minutes, it's going to get pretty ugly. That's enough of that. Uh, I assume that the two of you are friends of these three, as uh, Koji and Sam. Mr. Finnegan speaks up, and the lady sheds a silenced sigh of relief as her shoulders relax, and she slumps back in her chair. But uh, behind uh, Mr. Finnegan, Maxine and the others. Oh, they are. Yeah. Sam, did you forget you could call us? I shake my wrist at him. Um, well, you guys yeah. were in a meeting? Seems kind of rude. That well, may have also been him, difficult considering the uh, where oh, we yeah. were. Well, you can reach us on the elevator at least. Well, anyway, so the, where I'm, my belly's full. I'm ready to, to talk and then, uh, figure it out. And what you guys find out here? Uh, Maxine, um, I do have some work I must get back to, but with our with what we've discussed, uh, I will see what I can find. Uh, as much as I would be interested in adding you to my contacts, uh, he kind of looks at your wrist device, and uh, that seems to be Dynasty Make, however. Mm -hmm. uh, is mine Dynasty Make? Yours seems a bit more common. Maxine, is, uh, do you have a preference? or You know what? I have a better idea. As he goes behind the receptionist desk, he pulls out a Omni device. We could use this one. No one's using this, right? As he speaks to the female. Uh, no, Mr. Finnegan. It's, uh, please. And Jack walks back to Maxine. I'll hold on to this one. And... Or no. Better yet... As he gestures Maxine for you to take it. I'll take it. All right. 
If we ever need to get in touch with one another, I'll be able to reach you through this device. I think for safety reasons, perhaps it would be wiser for it to be one way, but... You do know where to find me. Yeah, exactly. We found you once. If we need to find you again, we can. That's a little creepy. Yeah, <laughs> you should have been there. Well, it's, uh, this was a very unexpected day, but again, there is work to be done, making sure Fontaine stays in good health and good standing. If you need me, uh, do return. I will make a mention of your names in our, in the system so that if you do come to visit again, the receptionists and the others will know where to send you. It's appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Finnegan. No, it has uh, given me a lot to think about. I'm sure we will be in touch once again. And with that, he gives you all a curt nod, walks off, and Sam and Maxine, or Sam and Koji, sorry, the two of you, uh, seeing the other three, Caden and Dadio probably look pretty typical, but you will pretty easily spot that Maxine's expression is just hard and sour. Like, she's usually pretty, like, that calm and neutral look. Maybe a I was little. Gonna say, she, does she have other looks? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like she, she clearly looks to be in a mood. Like it's written on her face as you all uh, see her. Seeing Finnegan walk away, I'm gonna look at the three. Oh, we're just gonna let him go. I mean, did you guys find out about the core? Is there one here? We had a lot to I talk. We don't mention that here. <clears throat> uh, I want to grab this. Uh, this uh, receptionist useless. She won't remember anything. <laughs> I'm gonna grab Caden's uh, no hand, and I'm just gonna try to start using his Omni device to just delete my contact from it and replace it with the new Omni device. <laughs> mm. Oh, like replace your your old one with your new the new one entirely. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then I want to do the same to Koji. I'm just going to do the same process for both of them, whether Great. they we gave Maxine a burner phone allowed or not. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just replacing the old contact with a new one uh and then going on to my visor and deleting their contacts from that omni device okay. for whatever that might be worth yeah. what the hell are you doing that for this one maris this is good this one <laughs> this is bad <laughs> oh okay <laughs> it worked! Well, why don't we just get rid of it? Because it's valuable. So we can, like, sell it? No, we can use it. Um, I'm... Sam is looking confused at the party. Don't You're I... following this? <laughs> we got what we needed. Let's find, uh... What, is it late in the afternoon now, or what time is it? Yeah, it's pushing afternoon, later in the day. The skies are getting a bit more colorful, um, but it's still still daytime, still like early mid-afternoon. Let's uh, let's string my Johns. Oh. He's my tinkerer friend. We'll see if he can help you with your equipment. If not, maybe he knows someone. Uh, and then we'll find a place for the night. That sounds good, guys? Sounds Can't good to me. I'm actually yeah. considering what you're suggesting, but maybe the best route we have. That's the biggest thing is we we need more information and Jack will hopefully get us some. But as of right now, what else do we have to do? Do you guys have anything else you need to get done? Other than leaving the city to explore these areas we talked about, I don't know. At some point, I think we will need to f try to find that article about the or that theory on, <laughs> or, on what we had talked about seems like we're not going to have much information, at least anywhere around here, that might be a little mm -hmm. Uh Actually, that's a good point. We should see if we can get Jack to get us a copy, because if we request a copy, it's very, very public. Uh, 
Well, um, Maxine, I can still see. I can still see what uh, what I can figure out at the Meritrade Company. Because I know what we yeah, talked about, but, but if we go there asking them for information and they don't already know, we're gonna start a gold rush. If one hasn't already started. I mean, Dynasty already did that by sending so many people planet side. Yeah, but Jack still had no idea. I'm thinking everyone else is planet side, unless they're an idiot for right. themselves too. But here's the thing. My job, people I work for, they told me to check out Nero Trade Company. That's a connection I still have. I haven't burned that bridge yet. I'm not saying not to use it. I'm just saying don't ask them about the core. I'm um, actually we need a we need. A, by the way, can we be like leaving the live right now? I feel like we shouldn't be talking about this in the first. No, you guys. The yeah, you are all uh, out of the library at this point, right? If anything, you guys are like in the front, like steps, trying to not draw attention, talking about random stuff. But um, Sam, Koji, obviously the two of you, kind of overhearing what Caden is saying and what Maxine is saying. There's going to be some gaps in like what the hell is the narrow trade company and that kind of shit. But um, for the most part, yeah, you guys are, I'm gonna just say, are kind of standing around talking. If you wanna go to a particular type of location, do let me know. Uh, I'm headed towards wherever John said he was. He's in the market district slash business district. And it was uh, John, I have all the information. Right well, now. how about, how about, we your, gonna, how about your buddies? Are we gonna wanna grab the car? Actually, yeah. That's well, what how far that's is John's? That's, oh, that's uh, a we big don't ass know. city. <laughs> well, the reason I was heading towards John because that's what we talked about before we left the library. So, mm -hmm. um, well, let's go ask someone. Uh, go look for a random stranger, I guess, again to ask on the street. That seems to be. Are we gonna walk out of the thing. library and walk right back in? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that might work. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, actually, I'll try the library. Why not? <clears throat> We're here. Source of information, right? All right, you guys head back into the, the receptionist lobby, and a lady goes up to smile and greet, and then her s smile from... <laughs> um, hi, uh, hi again. Um, w did you forget something? Actually, uh, yeah, I was wondering if you could help us find something. We're looking for uh, a place in the market district. We're new to town. Um, it's run by a man named John Finnegan. Oh, no, sorry, that's wrong. Jack Finnegan. Brian. Fine too. Sorry, uh, it's John uh, Grimes, and it's called Grimes Shop. It's in the Market District. Would you uh, be able to point us in the right direction? I'm not personally acquainted with um, that establishment, but if you're looking for the the Market District, the Business District, then... That's going to be on the western side of Fontaine. It's gonna take you a little white ways to get there. Are you do you have a vehicle? If not, uh, I could call a cab for you all. We had a vehicle. Is it is it worth driving, or is it better to? Oh uh, no, how you, far? you would want to take your vehicle. Uh, you're, otherwise, you'll be walking for a couple of hours. Okay, it, it's uh, so on the other side, side of town. Okay, west side. Gotcha. Thank you. We'll head west. If and you're on the uh, highway, there there will be signs. Just look for the, the business district. Okay, thank you, uh, ma'am. Sorry, what was your name? Jada. Thank you, Jada. Oops. Uh, unless anyone else has any questions, I'm going to start walking towards the door. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, I'm going to pull up the... the marker that i have on my omni device showing us where the car is so we we know which way to go back okay you guys will spend like 10 15 or whatever i said uh to get back to the vehicle and go to the underground and you guys were only there for like an hour and a half or maybe two tops so let me double check here pretty sure i wrote it down so you guys owe 10k in the parking fee Ugh. We didn't ask if they validated. <laughs> uh, 
Shit, you're right. Well, it's too far to go back now. All right, but you guys find the car. Um, who's driving? We'll go ahead and uh, again use the. Oop. What the heck? Get out of here. All right. I'm going to unpause the game uh, again. Whoever's in the driver's seat, uh, roughly where Maxine is located, is where you're going to be, right? How we did it before. It's probably Maxine driving with a kid in the front to like point out Grimes. <laughs> Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, I figure I'll figure I'll be sure, driving. I'll, I'll go up front. All right. <clears throat> yep. So Maxine driving. I'm gonna just default to her unless she says otherwise, because she's the only one still, I believe, that has driving proficiency. <laughs> I'm mean, not sure how important that, that is in a city, but that's subjective, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Proficiency, <laughs> no proficiency. I mean, you don't really need it, you know. You know. <laughs> All right. Hey, wait, is the game still paused? Still paused. Oh. Yes, sir. Why now? Yeah. There we go. Yep, we're good now. All right. Kaden will be up front by Maxine. Kaden? He, he might not be back to his computer yet. Oh, what, what is he doing? I'm logging back to my computer now. I was washing dishes. Oh. Multitasking. Clearly. I have a headpiece in, and I'm still listening to the talk. God. Oh, that's why we're hearing all your noise then. I get it now. Okay, okay. I'm like, thing wasn't muting. I apologize, guys. Oh, you're good. All right. So we'll just murder you in the game. Well, <laughs> you guys get in the vehicle. You pay. Uh, who's paying? Make sure you take off 10k, which is again uh, 10 silver. I, I guess I, I can. Yeah. I haven't paid for anything yet. Now that we've paid a few times, you guys starting to understand what I had going with the the currency. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna stop uh, voicing the conversion then. So, on the road, on the highway, heading out of the central library, there are signs that will direct you to the business district. But before we conclude tonight. As you guys make your way towards that business district in hopes of finding Grimes shops. Anything you have for one another in the confines of your vehicle? Um, does the gang share what they t talked about with us or what did they share with us with me and Koji? Yeah, once in the vehicle, I would, uh, unless anyone's going to protest. Again. Yeah, I think I, I would be on board with filling in the... Yep. the the two well-fed individuals so we don't need to play it all out you all were here to hear it um, so but we'll summarize it unless uh maxine and kaden and dadio if there's something in particular you want to highlight go for it and um yeah i'll uh, make one point and so um when uh jack had mentioned dawn that is a it's a it's something that's not to be trusted. It's not, it's not an organization to be trusted. On my plan, on my planet, I specifically looked okay, into the. I looked into them and did not find a lot of very good things about what they do, and I worry about whoever is involved with them and what their intentions may be. It's good that you brought it up. I was going to uh, start asking what you knew. Well, the thing is, and Caden and Maxine, you let me know. Do we do we trust him? Do we feel like he's someone that could be trusted? I felt at the time I didn't know where his allegiances may be, and when I asked him about Don, he didn't seem to have much information or wanted to divulge much information, but do we feel like he's someone that, someone that we can trust? I do feel like we can trust him. Until... I feel like we can trust him. I think... More than Dynasty. That goes for most people at this point. Maybe less than Luke. Luca was uh, in the fighting. He knows. He knows what we're fighting for. Jack. It's harder to say. D 
did you by chance figure out if there's a way to get off this planet? If we wanted to, we could probably go over to the spaceport and pay for our way off. Is that easy? Mm. Everyone else on this planet was saying uh, they couldn't get off? It's generally a thing of money or influence. Yeah, you, you saw Banuke's people. They don't have resources. What they have, they're scrounging together, scraping by. That's probably most people outside of cities like this. And Kane will be the exception though. Even the average people in somewhere like Fontaine might even be beyond their means, I don't know. Um learning learning that news, I wanna send an email or message to my crew or like what I think will maybe reach them. Okay, uh, Sam, question before you do this. Have, would you have tried to have done this before? No. Okay. Well, maybe maybe the first day of like, hey, where'd you go? <laughs> sure. Uh, so the yeah, first time, not since then. first time that you had done it, and maybe this is why you hadn't done it since, is that the first time you tried to contact them, we'll, we'll assume that you knew how to reach them or a means to reach them, but trying to contact them through the Omni device, you got a like target not found return or like an automated return, like target is unavailable. This is okay. Discontinued. Exactly. Same kind of concept. And if you were to try again, uh, you're welcome to make the attempt. Um, uh, I'm gonna try one more time. Yeah. I want to put together a message. Ha ha. Very funny, guys. Um, it's been a bit now. I think the joke's running old, but I did find a way to be group with you guys. You just let me know where in uh where you currently are, what planet, or what uh, sector, and I could meet back up. Hope to hear from you all soon. XOXO. With, and then, uh, yeah, my heartstrings, man. Uh, I feel so bad for Sam. <laughs> with a full belly, Sam Stonewell. Send it off. And send it off. All right. You send it off, and not more than two seconds later. An automated reply. Target not found. Oh, my heartstrings. I feel so bad for Sam. <laughs> um, I close that email and then I refresh my, I don't know, search site on uh, Akiyama Group and the uh, unknown like flying thing. Let's see if there's any new news. Ooh. All right. All right. You do. Your, you refresh your search and the breaking news report that you found the first time gone and no results um i hold my omni device right up to uh, koji's face koji uh -oh. look what what am i looking at there's nothing look look it's it, it's gone what's there's gone? A, the news the from from the bar I, I i pull it back so it's not right in front of his face and <laughs> so he can actually read it <laughs> thank you for that uh, what? Really uh, oh, he was looking for uh, uh, the, the news. For, yeah, from the bar uh, on your your headquarters in the ship. The ship is gone. Like, there's nothing. No, 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 no. There's nothing on the news about it. The fuck? Look, when, page uh... one, page two. Nobody goes to page three. <laughs> <laughs> Would anyone care to fill us in? What's going on? Uh, there was a ship over my family's headquarters back home. Saw it on the news. Don't know much more than that. But, uh, apparently the article's gone. Oh. Unusual. Who's, who's the news source? Are they connected to... Dynasty in any way? It's a good question. And was the ship covered in bugs? I tried to see if it was covered in bugs, but I couldn't see if it was covered in bugs, and... I didn't really think to look about the news network. I just saw news and I was like, yeah, home. 
Why the hell would you guys think it's you, covered in bugs? <laughs> use are <use>, thrown uh, <laughs> around. Disappeared. Use are thrown around bugs real casually. Um, <laughs> why? Why would there be a ship covered in bugs? Do you not remember what we saw like four days ago? <laughs> yeah, it, but that's here. You're saying this would, happens in other parts of the, uh, the universe. Well, that ship went somewhere. It would be astonishing. I imagine to make that kind of travel that quickly, considering it, uh, it, I mean, it didn't look like the quickest of vessels, let's say. But, um, my home world is made of magic. So, strange. <clears throat> doesn't really mean much and, and anymore. That's true. Yeah, look at what you can do there, bud. Strange shouldn't really mean much to anybody around you. Speaking of Akiyama. Yeah. Koji, are you aware that uh, Dynasty is watching you? No, but... But I don't... I don't dislike the attention. It's kind of weird. <laughs> well, I'm sure whoever sent you here probably would dislike the attention. But here's the benefit. I'm inclined for the moment to favor Akiyama over Dynasty. And we can control what Dynasty knows about what you're doing here. As long as what you're doing here is all in the green. Well, what do you mean all in the green? It generally means it's not in the red. It means if what you're doing here isn't to further some, I don't know, other attempt on tyrannical grasp on my homeworld or, or, or trying to monopolize on what we have here, then we're good. Oh yeah, I don't know anything about that. All I was told was to figure out what the fuck Dynasty was doing, what they wanted. Well, I think we got that answer already. Yeah, I thought it was the core. Wow, yeah, you're uh, actually, I think you're right. Oh. At least that's what you guys right. said, right? Like... I know that I was assigned a mission to keep an eye on you. But I might not be the only one. So wait, you're, you're Dynasty, right? ASEC, which is Dynasty, yes. And you're looking for me. watching you that's the mission that's why i'm on the planet that's why they have me on the planet i should so, say so is dynasty here for me it's my job can i go home and he kind of gets this like spark of hope in his eyes honestly why if if your whole purpose was to figure out what dynasty is doing here I feel like you could have figure that out before signing the papers and jumping in a dropship. Yeah, why are you actually here? That's something that like, what? Why can't you just go home? Why are you do you have to stay here? I gotta figure it out. But why? Are you being paid to? Are you being forced to? Is he definitely well, you probably couldn't see it because you're up front, but to anybody paying attention, he's definitely tenses up at that. He's, I, I, I just got him, and I, I, uh, see, I'm just looking to see if his skin melts. Just no. if he peels any any skin, turns no. from human flesh color to a different color. Nothing like that. <laughs> nope. Okay. Cool. 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 Unless he rages, then maybe we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. What's important? To keep in mind 
Koji, I'm grilling you on this. I was planning to grill Dario on the uh, whole Sakara thing. But... You people are... You're the only people I feel like I can really trust with anything right now. Fought at my side. We've been through it. Strangers in the unknown together. Yeah. What did Sam call us? Kin? Yeah, that's what Sam called That's what we are, aren't we? Oh no, quick, check the dirt. Dario looks around inside, <laughs> the, inside the vehicle. Nothing here, but I can speak for myself and say that I trust you all as as close as kin as I've ever had. Well, Dario, you better get yourself ready because I think uh, you might need to help John in jailbreaking some dynasty equipment soon. One more question, Koji. How do you know you're done your task? If you already know it's the core, are you not done with your task already? I mean, I didn't really think about it. They didn't give me much more information. I, fig I figured it would be like this grand quest, you know? Regain my honor and shit. So how do you know when you're done? Do you have to bring proof back? Bring the item they're seeking? Uh, well... He, he kind of like stops and thinks for a second. I, uh, I, I guess if they're looking for the core, then I'll find the core and bring it to my family. Maybe. It's a start. You, uh, maybe you'll figure it out, but you should know, you should know what you're doing and what you're doing it for. It's, it gives conviction, and I think you'll find a easier time finding the direction if you know what you're seeking, or you believe what you're seeking. Well, whatever it is I'm seeking, I know I'll, uh, I know I'll do it with you guys. I'll fight for you. Fight with you. Uh, appreciate it. It's, All right. Uh, I think with the mention of Kin and a little bit of uh, information sharing, as you all make your way over to the business district, however, let's call um, episode 16 to a close here. Unless, uh, was well, there one, one more? One last thing I, I do want to do is uh, Sam, Sam does open up his Omni Prime, his Omni device and yeah. writes in his journal. Our worst fears may become true. Bugs have found a way off planet. It is possible that you continue to do this on other ships. Uh, we remember the teachings of, of the engineer, the gunner, the driller, and the scout. <laughs> we must destroy bugs as they come across <laughs> and the forever bugs. prevail. And remember their model, rock and stone. God. <laughs> Let's go, rock and stone. <laughs> rock and stone in the heart. <laughs> stone. Oh, all right, everyone. Thank you for joining us on episode 16 of Horizon Exploration. So much information tonight. Lots of um. Well, yeah, let's uh, let's wind down for a bit. But party members, what did you guys think? How you feeling? What's going through so your head? So much lore. Right? Very a lot nice. Of lore, a lot of lore. I'm good. Like, how did you keep track of it all? Mm hmm. Yeah. I was real sweaty at the start of the session. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally sitting back. I was like, man, I need like popcorn. When you were first talking with Jack, I was like, I'm just gonna sit here and like, you're going to town on that. I'll let you go. <laughs> Immediately after leaving the bar, I was like, ah, oh, goddamn it, we could have milked this thing so much longer. Uh, we could have gotten so many shenanigans inside the bar. I wanted to do karaoke. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> karaoke. Just... Nah. I wanted you to start like arm wrestling every single patron. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe there'll be a time for that.
<laughs> next bar, next bar. Next bar. Yep. Maybe at the market district. Maybe you guys will go for drinks with uh, Grimes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. Um, I'm very hurt. Sam is very hurt that we needed someone to tinker with a with an item. Hey, you guys went to John first and not Sam. <laughs> <laughs> the technician uh, who doesn't know how to drive a fucking yeah, Oh my god. I drove I, just fine. <laughs> the, the third time, maybe. <laughs> I, you, uh, you don't wear seatbelts. That's a different problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised at a little bit at all of the similarities between Maxine and Koji. Yeah. Like, when he went shopping, you know, he went to pick up his, his, you know, six or something energy drinks and just a whole box of Slim Jims. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about when we got into town, I was like, well, if we're stopping to get gas, I should, I should have Maxine, like, go in and just buy a whole box of granola bars. <laughs> just like, re on just rations. like a whole box of granola bars. Oh, yeah, we, we forgot to talk about it. But when you guys met up with Koji again, he was uh, hauling an extra new piece of, of luggage a box of <laughs> road snacks <laughs> it all went right in the duffel bag man I'm there you go about. i thought your duffel bag was chock full oh, yeah, of uh it well it's got it's got like drugs and clothes and <laughs> yeah where are you gonna Other fit shit? are you buying a small little 20 pack my head was like no i took the crate of the 20 packs yeah <laughs> No, not not the crate of the. I'm, I'm talking like one of the display things of the. Slim okay, Jim. so you just you got know, you just got like a couple dozen of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that's doable. That's doable. The little cardboard tower. Okay, yeah. I gotta update my notes. I literally said box of Slim Jims. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's got a small uh, wooden crate that they ship in. He, he eats one every hour. <laughs> He's like delivery truck. You need to keep that protein up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> delivery really? truck outside the store. He's like, hey, you want to just put one of those in my trunk real quick? Like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll just go and I'll pay for them. Just, I'll take the whole pallet. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, he, he does this as an arm exercise. He puts his arm through the the skid like a like a forklift, and he just. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, Go Our... just superhuman strength. There's nothing he can't do. It's All it's that protein diet, yeah, exactly. That that <laughs> artificial protein diet. Let's go. All it's right, incredible. well, we're wrapping it up here, everyone. Thank you again for those tuning in, whether it was live or on YouTube after the fact. Do hit that button. Let us know what you think of the campaign so far. It's starting to really get a little heated and interconnected. I'm very excited to see what the party does in the coming sessions as they continue to look for information on what this horizon core may be and how they might be able to track it down uh in addition to well we'll see what else comes up but once again thank you all and with that episode 16 is coming to a close take care everyone till next time take it easy as always and bye bye that's a wrap good one yeah. goodbye <laughs>